Hi everybody and welcome to the deep dive. Nobody really wants to be the worst scuba diver, right? But what makes a great scuba diver? Whether you're just starting out or you've been diving for a while now and you want to sort of up your skills, you'll hopefully find something inspiring in this video and you've already taken the first step in becoming a better scuba diver. You're actually doing research by watching videos like this and searching online for scuba content. You're not limiting yourself to just classrooms and textbooks. You actively want to know more, which is the very first step in wanting to become the greatest scuba diver. I'm still learning things about scuba diving, and I've been doing this for well over 10 years now. Things change, our understanding of the biology and the chemistry and the physics of what's happening to our bodies on a dive is always being studied and updated. Diving algorithms in your dive computer, they're being updated to be more accurate every single year, allowing us to dive longer and safer too, because the computer is actually understanding better, well, more the algorithm kind of, uh, what What's happening inside of us. Procedures, what we do in the water, are being upgraded all of the time and how we wear our gear is being tweaked as well, making it safer and more practical. So every so often just look up some of the dive forums, uh, social media and just take a moment to look at how other divers are doing things, how their gear is set up and why they set it up that way. Even if you've been scuba diving for years and years and years, then consider changing from time to time because there may be a better, safer way to do things. And even outside of all of the little things that are being studied and changing, there is still a lot to learn about scuba diving. In your entry level courses and even in advanced courses as well, they only scratch the surface of what there is to learn about what's happening to your body, how things interact underwater, in the marine ecosystem and where to go. Just by learning a little something about some of the fish and the invertebrate species in the local area can vastly expand your experience in the water because you're understanding that oh, that little guy does a little certain something or if he's there, then that means that something else is likely to be nearby. So in knowing that, when you do finally manage to spot like a, a long nosed hawk fish or something, you feel great because you didn't just swim past that sea fan, gaze at it and carry on. You knew that there might be one hiding there somewhere. So a great scuba diver is always researching more about themselves, the environment, their equipment, so that they can become a better diver. Too many divers just touch and bump into things in and just around the water, even on the boat. If you want to be the greatest diver there ever was, then your objective is to touch nothing but water and the boat, you kind of have to touch the boat, but the marine environment itself is surprisingly fragile. It can handle crashing waves and currents and all that stuff, but it hasn't evolved to manage clunky humans bumping into things and touching stuff. Even the act of gently touching something can actually have unwanted effects. Oils from your hand or suntan lotion on your hand or whatever it is can damage marine life and kill it. And just recently a disease has spread across coral reefs transmitted by scuba divers unknowingly. The best scuba diver takes things slowly and considers where everything is around them. Everything on their body, all of their equipment, where things are dangling, where your fins are, that takes quite a long time to learn exactly how long your feet are when you're diving, even where your bubbles are going. They're considering water movements. If it's pushing you at a certain speed, you might need to know that you need to start moving now or it's going to push you into something. They're they're looking at other divers in the water so that they don't get too crowded or kicked in the face. Even on the boat, a great scuba diver will keep all of their gear together and organized, check every part of it for wear and damage between dives, test their own gas mixes and make sure it's correct and just keep out of others way. 
Your local dive center needs you as much as you need them. Gone are the days where the only place that you could get scuba diving equipment and guidance was at your local dive center. Those days are gone. Now you can buy things from the other side of the world and not even know it in a lot of cases. But this is killing your local dive center. And when they're gone, they're gone. No more air fills, no more, oh, could you just tweak my regulators or advice on your diving? Now, I'm not expecting you to ignore substantial savings by shopping around, but your default should always be to check your local dive center first. Give them a chance. See if they can get hold of the gear and offer it for a fair price. But if they can't go any cheaper, then don't give them a hard time about it. I've had uh, customers demand that I sell them equipment at cost price, where it would literally cost me money to sell them a piece of equipment because they found it on some obscure website somewhere around the world. That's not a great diver. A great scuba diver knows that, sure, they could save a bit of money by buying something online from another country, but that little extra cost is going towards the expert advice and the guidance of the professional diver at their dive center. And if you keep returning and supporting them, then they're much more likely to give you a favor in the future. If you walk into a dive center, take an hour of their time looking around and deciding on a set of regulators from their expert advice and then leave and then buy those regulators online, they're not going to bend over backwards to help you out next time. If you buy gear from abroad as well, say goodbye to any kind of warranty. Some manufacturers are happy to take their returns from local dealers in different countries around the world, but the dealers aren't always happy about it. And worst case, you'll have to return it to wherever you bought it from yourself. And postage can be pretty expensive. Support your local dive center. It's going to be cheaper in the long run. And a great scuba diver is always going to be in and out of their dive center and then just buying things from time to time. A great scuba diver won't settle for just okay equipment setups and procedures. You know, that'll do. How your gear is assembled from the hose routing to clips, individual clips that you use, and even the hoses should be considered and changed to be the best possible combination that is the safest and most efficient. Luckily for you, there are many, many other divers out there who have been experimenting with different equipment setups and equipment types for years. Now, you don't want to customize your gear too far and, make, uh, and end up making it worse. So spend some time focusing on one aspect at a time. Check that change works for you and it's safe and then move on to the next thing. If you change absolutely everything all at once, then there is a, a chance that one or even two faults can build up and then become a problem. You only want to make one change at a time. Take a hard look at yourself or try and get a, an honest buddy to take an honest look at yourself and how you act and move around in the water and then just strive to be better every time. Practice different fin kicks, actually practice them in a pool or in the water and backwards finning as well. Practice your mask skills so it becomes second nature for whenever it happens in the real world it's not so much of a shock when you have to put your mask back on. Work on your physical and mental well-being as well. Exercise muscle groups that you're going to use for your diving, your legs. Never skip le leg day for scuba diving. Exercise your legs for finning so that those muscles are trained and they work. Work on your aerobic and cardiac fitness as well. Scuba diving is surprisingly hard and the better you've conditioned your body, the better your air consumption is going to be as well, so you can stay down for longer. Always reconsider your gear, your health, and your diving procedures periodically from time to time. Update and improve when necessary, and practice your skills. Sure, you could do it six years ago on your open water course, but let's try it again. If you have a dive computer, then read the manual. It's not the most thrilling of reads, I'll grant you that, but your dive computer can do a lot of things that you probably didn't know it could do, and it can convey a lot of information on your dive, but you can't read the manual at 30 meters underwater, so if you don't understand what it's trying to tell you, you could be in trouble. 
The best diver knows how to use their computer in and out of the water and what it's trying to tell them at all times. Dive computers are getting smarter and smarter now and models now let you customize different screens with personalized informations and layouts depending on your preference. If you want a more visual display, then sure, you can have nice graphics and stuff. If you want just the pure data, then go for it. But if you don't know how to manipulate your dive computer, it'll just be in factory mode, which will do the job, but it might be able to do more for you. There's a reason why all of your gear, your computer, your regulators, your BCT, even your snorkel comes with a user manual. Somebody has spent a lot of time writing in that user manual in 14 different languages, and that's to make sure that you use it and you look after it properly. Some gear requires very specific care and servicing schedules. Using the wrong lubricants or not servicing them at the right schedule or using them the right way can shorten their lifespan. So while a bad diver complains that their equipment is malfunctioning because they haven't looked after it properly, a great diver is still using the same gear for years and years because they use it properly and they look after it properly. So the main takeaways are just to look after yourself and your equipment and the environment around you. Be a productive member of the scuba diving community who contributes and improves the community. Out there and on social media, all of you are representatives of scuba diving as a community. Everyone who searches for scuba diving, they're gonna see pictures and videos of you so you have to become the best scuba diver you can. If we all look great and we all come together, it'll encourage others to become scuba divers and just always want to be on the top of your game. Mentally and physically healthy, gear is well-maintained and skills practiced and just don't bump into stuff is probably the biggest one. But what makes a great scuba diver for you? Is it their Instagram feed or their dive count? How many cert cards they have in their wallet? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.